And now, it is my very great pleasure to introduce for this morning's instructions the first part of our workshop. Reverend John Scott will guide us through, and I hope you have all come with your pens. I know there's paper in your, there's a flyer with paper because he really is going to instruct us to do work between now and Monday. So we come fully prepared for a really uplifting, inspiring, transformative workshop 2021. Our beloved John Scott, Reverend John Scott, I invite you to come forward and thrill us with your message. <laughs> Happy, happy, happy new year, my wonderful Temple of Light worldwide family. Happy new year to you. We'll see you. <laughs> Let me try it again. Happy new year, everybody. <laughs> happy new you. Wow, so it's 2021. An entire 12 months stretching before us inviting us to explore its adventurous roads. Wow. If we learned anything in 2020, we certainly learned that life can change in the twinkling of an eye. Eh? Truly, the only thing we can be sure of is God's unchanging love and presence in our lives. And that's something for us to really hold on to. It behooves us to hitch our wagon to that certainty and to follow the master teacher's instructions or advice in Matthew 6, verse 33, to, and I quote, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right useness of the law, and all things shall be added unto you. So we chose as our tagline for the new year, 2021, God our number one. Can we say it together? 2021, God our number one. <laughs> it is also the title of my encouragement this morning. If you resonate with this, this tagline, then make it your own for the new year. Or you can write your own and share it with us tomorrow evening at our workshop. If you have one that, that you, f you feel gives you a better buzz, then make it your tagline, your personal tagline, and use it as a mantra to guide your footsteps through the new year. Of course, my friends, I know much of our lives will continue without interruption during this new year. Perhaps with each day like the identical squares of a calendar in which only the numbers change as we follow the old familiar routines and patterns which refuse to yield to change. That is, unless 2020 really threw us for a loop and we decided to learn from it and grow in it and to count its many blessings, and in which case we can set our intention to break any pattern that no longer suits us, and if we desire it, make God our number one priority by establishing new and vital patterns of spiritual practice, such as daily prayer and meditation. If you are open to it, a new opportunity may thrust itself into your lap this new year. Exciting new people may enter your life, bringing their own colorful history and unique gifts to share with you and with the world. New avenues for creative self-expression could present themselves requiring talents and ingenuity and skills and inner resources you didn't even dream you possessed. Some of that may have been happening to you already from last year. You, you didn't think you could ever learn to navigate the social media and to learn how to operate on Zoom or whatever platform. So my friends, this is a time of joyous expectation and an opportunity to learn and to grow and to be and become all that we were intended to be on this journey 
on this glorious adventure we call life. You know, we are all indeed greater than we think we are. And we are called to be new in the now. To wake up to a new understanding of the majesty of our being and be new within th that discovery of ourselves. It is important to recognize this because of the desire inherent within all of us to reveal our majesty and our beauty and to live our truth, to let it out and to live out loud and, and joyfully all the various aspects of our life and our life's adventure. And so, my friends, no matter how your life shifts and changes, its spiritual foundation has to be a reliance on that inner presence and power which Jesus the Master called Father and which is called by so many names and worshipped in so many different ways all across the world by so many different cultures and so many different peoples, but it is ever the one. God is indeed number one. And the most important aspect of your life and the central spiritual necessity in your life, I want to suggest to you this morning, is your relationship, your personal relationship with God. If your relationship to God is important to you, if it really is important, then this is the year to work on it. Ask yourself the question, is this relationship I have with the Creator dear to me? And am I willing to give it and make it the most important relationship in my life? Am I giving it enough attention? Friends, the answers to these questions have within them the seeds of tremendous power, for they can shape the contours of your life this coming year and beyond. What is your relationship to that indwelling presence and power we call God? Do we just reach for it when trouble catch we? You know, when you find yourself in a precarious, you say, Lord, help me. I never forget being at, um, in Orlando at um, Disney World and riding a one of those roller coaster things called Space Mountain. You know, when I got back and Reverend Elmer said, how was it? I said, I've learned a new two word treatment that really works if you're frightened. She said, what is it there? I said, Jesus Christ, <laughs> you know, get me out of this thing. <laughs> but you know, when we treat, when we do affirmative prayer, that's the most important thing to recognize God as number one. 2021, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, give it to me. God, God and I number one. There's a wonderful quote attributed to King George the Sixth of England, England uh, who is uh, reported, 40 to have said this and that quote. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of faith and trust. Go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of faith and trust. That shall be to you better than a light and safer than a known way. And that's what we need to do, my friends, to put our hand in, the, in that hand of faith and trust which is within us. It's not something external. We don't have to reach for it out there. It's inside here. Reach inside for that assurance that number one in your life has always been there. It created you in the image and likeness of all that it is and has provided you with all of the resources you could possibly need to meet every eventuality on this glorious adventure we called life. And so the lesson for us, my friends, is to begin right here and right now to work on making God our number one priority. 
Make a commitment then to work on your own personal, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual growth in 2021, supported by your number one. The first step in personal healing is honest self-awareness. We really have to take a, a good, deep look at ourselves. I don't want to say a good hard look because it doesn't have to be hard. It can be gentle and tender and loving. We need to love ourselves, not to be harsh with ourselves and to kick ourselves in the shin because we messed up again, but to look with love at where we're coming from. And so your assignment in preparation for tomorrow's goal-setting workshop is as follows. In your program, you will find a, a little flyer and it's on the screen as well, or will be shortly uh, um, if, if Theo posts for me. 2020 blessings, 2020 learnings, and 2020 things to let go of and release. 2020 blessings, 2020 learnings, and 2020 things to let go of or release. And what I want you to do is to spend some time this evening, between now and tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock when you come for the workshop, responding to those three questions. Really look inside yourself. What were the blessings? And you know, if those blessings, they don't, have, they don't have to be enormous, cataclysmic blessings. Sometimes it's, it's small gestures by a friend. It's the remembrance that I am here on my own, but I'm not alone. That I've, I've chosen not to walk the street as often as I do. I, one of my learnings is I'm just amazed that I don't have to go to the supermarket every day. You know, because I live close to one. Oh, I need condensed milk. Out you go. Next day. Oh, you know, um, matches. If, you know, I'm running low on matches. Out I go. And then I've learned that, first of all, to be more organized and to make a list and you know, live by that list. And whatever I don't have, it can stay until next week's shopping expedition. So just look at the blessings, look at the learnings, and list them. A lot of times, you know, we have them in our head, but there is something, I don't want to say magical, but something really important that happens when you write down what you are thinking. And I know a lot of us, speaking for Jamaicans, we don't like to write. But let us practice this year to put our thoughts in black and white. Because when you look at them up close, having written them, you'll be amazed at the clarity that comes to you from that simple exercise of just writing. I've been doing something else too, which uh, I've been practicing. I heard it on uh, one of these TED Talks, and it's about how you create new neural pathways, um, new neural networks. And the, the secret is to use your non-dominant hand. In other words, if you are right-handed, to use your left hand. Um, if you are left-handed, to use your right hand. To do as many common tasks as you possibly can. Simple things like using your left hand to, to open the door, or to pick up an object, or to soap up the rag in the bath. Um, it evidently, when you use your non-dominant hand, it helps to, to create new neural networks which strengthen your your mental processes, and um, it's supposed to be very useful. So just simple things sometimes um, are, are really what we can use without any, being any big, any big deal to improve the way we relate to ourselves, the way we live our lives, the way we, we express our godness and experience our goodness. So make a list of your blessings. Make a list of your learnings. What did I learn last year? Uh, did you learn that you can live on much, much less than you thought you could? Uh, just what were your learnings? And also, what do you need to let go of? What are the old habits, the old, the old patterns that no longer serve you? And bring that list with you to the workshop tomorrow evening. And if you haven't received the link, please send us an email to templeoflight at cwjamaica.com and we'll be sure to, to get it to you tomorrow morning first thing. And also, when you get the link, 
share it with all your friends on social media and invite them so we have a, a real big crowd um, virtually. And so back to your assignment. Pay special attention, my friends, to where your life, in your life you seem to have those stuck patterns I mentioned that are blocking your progress. I find that a lot of times that happens um, with people. You know, you start up the new year and you, you, you know, yes, I'm going to be, do this and I'm going to exercise and I'm going to walk every day for five days a week. Well, maybe just three. Um, or, well, I missed two days already, so maybe I'll just make it once a week. And before you know what, you're not walking at all. And that happens every year. You know, we, we, we repeat the patterns. Look at those repeat patterns because they are indications of underlying emotional pain which can be healed. And so the good news is that here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, we offer spiritual practices unencumbered by dogma and orthodoxy so that you can work on those areas of your life that are important for you to improve, to change, and to live out fully. So refuse, my friends, to spend another year repeating the same old patterns. Tomorrow evening, practitioner Sandra Cooper and I will lead us through the process of letting go the old unwanted baggage and embracing the wonderful new experiences we desire, we deserve, and that we should have as we begin actualizing our biggest dreams for 2021 and beyond. Don't miss that workshop. Please be with us tomorrow evening. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the American poet, essayist, and philosopher who led the transcendentalist movement of the mid-19th century, said that one side of us, I love this, opens to the divine. One side of us opens to the divine. Quote, into every intelligence there is a door which is never closed through which the creator passes. There's a door through which the creator passes into your consciousness. So tomorrow evening, after you have established your goals for the new year in the powerful, prayerful atmosphere of our workshop, set your intention to attend a Science of Mind class this year. The Science of Mind classes are very, very, very key if you want to go beyond just the inspiration of a Sunday morning talk, which is wonderful, and the fellowship and the sharing on a Sunday, to a deeper understanding of your relationship with that indwelling presence and power, which we have named number one. So make, a, make set your intention to come to our class this year. And also, in addition to attending a Sunday service, check out Monday mornings in the garden with me. It's 10 minutes. Or Tuesday evenings, bring your prayer requests for a three-quarter hour of touching base at a deeper level with spirit. And some, some wonderful, wonderful messages come on a Tuesday evening, which ju are just a shot in the arm for our intentions and, and for our midweek journey. And then on Thursday evenings, there is prayer power. I don't know how many of you have been to a prayer power. It's now on Zoom, but it is, it is an hour of pure peace and pure connectivity in which if you feel moved, you can pray, but you can just be there and chill while Steve Golding, our practitioner, um, blesses us with the most amazing and inspirational music. And my friends, there is one other practice which we teach here, but which we have not for a few years done collectively, and I'm determined to rectify it, rectify it this year. And that is the powerful practice of meditation. If you don't meditate, if you're not a meditator, give yourself the gift in 2021. Call our office or email us at Temple of Light. Ugh. At cwjamaica.com, thank you. And let us know, and I'll be happy to set an appointment with you to teach you to meditate. I can tell you that it is one of the most important portals. In fact, I want to say, I dare say, it is the most important. 
way of accessing number one. Joel S. Goldsmith, the monumental teacher of practical mysticism, in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, emphasizes the importance of meditation. He says that it is only through meditation that we are enabled to find God. He writes, and I quote, the act of meditation is solely for the purpose of quieting us into a state of peace and serenity in which we become receptive to the word of God unfolding and revealing itself in and as your consciousness. Very important. Goldsmith insists that when we meditate, we must leave our problems and concerns at the door and enter into the sacred place within to hear the still small voice. And we enter with the attitude that we are seeking only the kingdom of God and its righteousness. So in 2021, with God as number one, when difficulties arise, just say to the problem or to the situation, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Tell every problem in your life and every challenge and every situation, I have meat to eat that you know not of. And my friend, that meat is the word of God, which is the meat, your wine, your water, your home eternal in the heavens. Number one is your absolute assurance that your feet will be kept upon the perfect path and that with the right use of the law, all things that you desire will be added unto you. I have meat to eat that you know not of. Let's say it together. I have meat to eat that you know not of. In a half voice. I have meat to eat that you know not of. In a whisper. I have meat to eat that you know not of. And in your heart. I heard Sandra Cooper saying that I know not of. Yes. I have meat to eat. You know, I know that many people tell me, or some people tell me, they're working on this relationship with God on their own. That's wonderful. But there is an energy and a love and a spirit that we generate when we gather in communion, in common union with each other, which is absolutely transformative. Whether we meet in person here in the sanctuary or we connect on the World Wide Web, that coming together of our collective consciousness is the power that can transform this world from humankind to Godkind. And that is really our divine Dharma. It is why we are here. So set your intention that in 2021, God are number one. A year in which you will dive deep inside to discover and reveal the spiritual pattern you want to create for yourself and to share in a world that truly works for all. There's a poem by Ernest Holmes which captures this idea of the oneness of God and I'd like to, to, to end by sharing it with you. It is called Song of the Creator. From sorrow, From sorrow pain, pain disaster, disaster, this truth alone can set man free. The self-knowing, known and knower are ever one with changeless me. It is I, the truth incarnate, light of everlasting day, who is supreme in every soul to each the life, the truth, the way. Those who see me as the all, uncaught by separate desire, find light and flame of single life, is lit by one eternal fire. All signs are holy things to me when faith and love with them conspire to bring each seeker of the way to light of my celestial fire. All paths of worship lead to me 
All shrines to me alone belong. The hymns of praise through all the ages are parts of my celestial song. I am the beginning and the end, and that is, all that is, is one vast whole. I am the Father and the Son. I am spirit, body, mind, and soul. Nature clothes my many forms in plant and tree, in air and stone, in iron, wood, in bird and beast, in the sower and the sown. Smaller than the smallest atom, larger than the greatest sea, the moving force in each and all, the pageant and the pageantry. I am the source, the cause, the all, darkness of earth, light of star, Radiance of the sun and moon, I am here, there, close and far. All beings have their root in me. My soul, the primal cause of all the flowing of the, the seed to life. Eternal spring, eternal fall. I am the seed, the root, the breath, the earth, the moon, the sun, the air. I am present, past, and future. I am here, there, and everywhere. Though formless is my hidden life, I am the form of what is made. I am the way, the truth, the life, substance, shadow, light and shade. I, the eternal word, made flesh, am both namer, and the name, the creator and what's created, the fire, the ashes, and the flame. Splendor of light supernal, knower and known, wisdom of wise, giver, receiver, and keeper, heaven, hell, doom, and a paradise. Flame of uncaught cause in heaven, seed of what is born on earth, action, Reaction, time and timeless, infant, aged, death and birth. Hidden within all forms evolved, in silence, beauty, wisdom, will, is that which makes the cycle move, unmoved, immovable and still. Thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Namaste.